come till I'm gone. Hey everyone, it's Grace and this is my 2020 capstone project. I'm so excited to share all of this information with you guys, all of the testimonies of other individuals with you guys. The documentary that you're about to watch is a culmination of different individuals from different awesome backgrounds sharing their 2020 experience with you all in hopes to encourage and to inspire you guys to walk into 2021 with encouragement in your hearts, with inspiration in your minds, and with God just in everything that you do. So do me a favor and sit back, relax, and be blessed in Jesus' name. So you want to talk about 2020? Let's begin, shall we? <laughs> 2020 for me has been a year of revelation. Had its pros and it's had its cons. My 2020 has been just hard in general. 2020 has been ridiculous. Uh, it's been a whirlwind. Revelatory. 2020 was definitely a blessing and a teacher. It's been good. I know that's not what most people expect to hear, but generally it's been a good year. A wild ride of unexpected twists and turns with some unexpected delays, but also some opportunities for growth. I have wanted to use the word difficult, but difficult almost seems like there's no resolution, but challenging kind of gives you hope that, okay, yeah, it's a, it's a bit challenging, but I can overcome it. 2020 has been a trial. 2020 has been a movie, but I'm gonna always say that it's been my favorite movie thus far. It's such an unpredictable year. Eye-opening, to say the least. I mean, I think there's literally no coincidence in the name 2020. Uh, I saw a lot of things clearly this year. I saw our, our government clearly. I saw racial injustice clearly. I saw my own life clearly from a mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, and all types of aspects in life. The hardest part was accepting that I had absolutely positively no control over time no matter how much i planned no matter how many how many goals i set out for myself and no matter how intentional i was about the things that i would accomplish coming into this year for me the hardest part of 2020 was having to work on the front lines of a global pandemic i'm a registered nurse working in an icu unit and the icu we have to take care of the sickest patients in the hospital. Uh, the patients who, I don't know if you've ever seen like Grey's Anatomy, uh, who are on almost everything, every medication possible, on a ventilator, and they're receiving all these different treatments. Those are the patients that I care for and my coworkers care for. One of the hardest moments for me in 2020 was when Ahmaud Arbery died and having to just really comprehend and understand that. Uh, early on in this pandemic, I believe around February and March, I spent two or three days just crying on my bed, literally, uh, not knowing what to do, just feeling broken because it's like, man, what can one do in this world and how it is today to just live? The hardest part about this year has been uncertainty, just not knowing what was coming next, whether, you, you know, you lose your job or anything like that, you know, it was definitely tough to deal with. I experienced heartbreak, experienced failure. I experienced um, feeling lost. Yet at the same time, I also experienced an overwhelming sense of joy from my father. I experienced love. I think I experienced very tangible empathy. You know, like feeling people's pain and, and seeing what they're going through. Like I could say I was empathetic before, but now I, it's very tangible. I experienced love not in a romantic way but like love from people like 
actual like love and care from people you know covid and the lockdown and quarantine and everything that's happened in 2020 um has really taught people to appreciate who is in their lives um and to check up on people and i've seen an increase of people checking up on me as as well as an increase on me checking up on people i had coronavirus i was infected um and i was it, it was just it was a eye-opening time and i never thought that i'd ever go through anything like that i even had a sense of guilt i beat myself up for it uh for doing things that could have been unnecessary but st i still felt that not that i was invincible but i still had you know i didn't want to lose opportunities and um so I got infected. Uh, I lost a couple of jobs. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I did have a few jobs in the past that I lost due to COVID. Money, because I shop a lot. Whatever I lost it wasn't a loss. It was a gain, if that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, I got something that I lost. I lost my confusion. I became more self-aware about myself, about where God is taking me to in life, about direction. So yeah, I did lose confusion. I lost that. Some things that I lost was job opportunities. I came into the year with hopes to start a new career path and, and, and start a new job. And those opportunities were taken from me the moment the pandemic hit. I've lost a lot of people, um, a lot of elders that have gone to my church, about 30 of them have passed um, from COVID. And it, it, it's been tough. It's been tough seeing those people that have been you know, huge influences on me um, just not here with us anymore. Honestly, I felt hopeless. It was really hard. Uh, it was tough. I felt hopeless. I felt like none of my efforts, none of the medications, none of uh, the, the, the hard effort that I put in on my day was working for any of these patients. And it just sucked having to come back the next day at work and find out that this patient who I was laboring for, for 12 hours passed away overnight. And it just felt like there was a dark cloud just looming over my unit, over the entire hospital. And over, I'm pretty sure over hospitals all over, the, um, all over the world. The opportunity to stay home from work made me feel a little freer to pursue other ventures that I had to put on hold often. I'm a budding artist. I love to make music and I love to sing, but I also have bills and a family to support. And so oftentimes, whatever time I have left after my nine to five is dedicated to music. But at the start of this pandemic, when we were home, I was like, okay, this is a good thing. I'll have more time to dedicate to the thing that I love. And I got the opportunity to participate in writing workshops, got to meet some awesome people. And I was like, okay, 2020, you were off to a shaky start, but you're not so bad. This could be a year for growth, for new opportunity that I probably wouldn't have been able to get had it been, you know, had the world been open. But then those workshops ended, I returned to work and I found myself in a rut. Things were slow. I didn't feel creative. I didn't feel like I could make music. I didn't feel like I could do the thing that I loved. I learned to one, have multiple streams of income. I learned to have a backup. I learned to trust God. Most importantly, I learned to trust God and trust the timing in things because we may look like things may seem late, um, 
but when God do certain things, it's always on time. And I'm pretty sure this statement is redundant, but it's always on time when we least expect it. Like 2020 happened the way it's supposed to happen, how it was supposed to happen. If there's anything I've learned that I could tell you guys and for you guys to learn from it, is honestly be yourself and love yourself. Don't act like something to be known, to be seen as this. If people see you as whatever, all right, that's on them. All right, who you are is in your heart. But that's between you and God. And your spouse probably. All right, give you got one. I've learned to remember that God is, is, he doesn't leave us and he doesn't leave us unaware of things. Whether he's, you know, he's reaching out, um, inspiring somebody in a dream or a vision. Um, he's always telling us how we can be one step ahead of something. COVID taught me that God is unlimited. And I think that's the biggest lesson I learned during COVID because in this season of being locked down and in COVID and the season of loss, I gained so much. Um, God had promised me so many things the end of 2019 to happen in 2020. And so we get into the first two months of 2020 and then boom, lockdown. And it's like, dang, how is God gonna do all these things that I thought he promised me? And then he surprises us and does it. I was like, oh my God, I really wanted to elevate my ministry this year. And COVID hit and I was like, dang, how is it gonna happen? I can't meet new people. I've met more people in my life during lockdown than I ever did when we were not in lockdown. That is to show you that God is unlimited. Then I remember that I'm a child of God first. Um, the moment I decided to follow Jesus, my identity in him became far greater than my identity in this world. And I am constantly reminded that God is an intentional God. And that's not to say that he is the one who set sent coronavirus into the world and that's not to say that he is the one who um, sent racism into the world. It is to say that he understands that this is a wicked world, that this is a, a world that isn't necessarily made for us to be at peace 24 seven, that it isn't necessarily a world that wants to see us all be in kumbaya, right? But remembering that God is faithful, remembering that he is greater than, the, than he that is in the world and knowing that because I am in Christ Jesus, then I'm free. One thing I learned is that all my strength really does come from God. I feel like I was weak because my relationship with God during quarantine was weak. And like, I felt like not going to church every Sunday just drained me actually. It drained every aspect of my life. So believe me when I tell you that God is important in every aspect of your life. I learned that truly, truly, when God says he's got you, <laughs> guys, he means it. He means it. Um, he has never failed and he never will fail. And he proved to me that he's a faithful God. And as soon as you choose to be a part of this family, then you're covered. He doesn't play with your heart. He doesn't play with your emotions, um, with your job, with your relationship, with your friends, with your ministries in every single aspect of your life, even when it doesn't seem like there's control, he's always holding your hand and he's always guiding you. He always has a plan that's way better than yours. I promise, I can testify to it. I will never forget how 2020 changed my life. Um, it changed my perspective. It changed my vision. It changed who I see myself as. It changed who I see God as. I was able to really get real intimate. And you know, when you're intimate with something, you're able to know the ins and outs and everything about it. I'll never forget how much 2020 has changed my perspective on life, has changed my perspective on people, has changed my level of faith has played a role in the person that I desire to be. With that, I want you to take a moment and remember the moments where things didn't feel out of control. I want you to remember the moments where you were able to smile in the midst of um, the pandemic. I want you to take a moment and remember 
what it feels like to say that I'm free, regardless if there's systems in place that say I'm not. Because we are truly free indeed. And it is our right to be here. And no one can take that away from us. No one. I just want to take a moment to remember that there's always something greater beyond the storm. You know, um, it was hard to see beyond, you know, everything, right? Just the way the year started with, you know, Kobe dying and, you know, just this introduction of this this virus. Um, it was a lot. But I understand that there was still greater beyond all this stuff. It was still greater that, you know, God had in store for us, so. But also take several moments to remember all the good that God has done for us coming up to this point. Um, take a moment to remember all the good times that we've had with our friends and our families and, you know, take a moment to remember that, you know, um, life is short and that, you know, what we have today and right now uh, could be gone just like that. It's my hope that you heal. For anybody who's watching this who has lost somebody, um, somebody f close to them, a friend, um, a parent, a grandparent, anybody that you've lost, uh, it's my hope that you heal from this and be able to move on and um, just be able to take what you've learned from this, take the scars that you've gained from this and be able to just um, become better with it. It's my hope that you would remember that you are exactly where you are supposed to be. That God has called you for such a time as this and he would never leave you nor forsake you. Lean on your father in heaven and turn to him at all times because when things get shaky, he is the only thing that's stable because he is the solid rock. There's a song by uh Tal, Rich Talbert, I don't know what his name, but he just dropped an album. It's so great. You should listen to it. And there's a song that goes, um, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And this is not an accident. I'm alive because there's more. You should remember that. It's my hope that you know that God loves you. Um, in this season, a lot of people have experienced loneliness. A lot of people have experienced um, isolation. And so I just want you to, you know, know and to remember that God loves you completely. He doesn't see anything wrong with you. All he sees is that you're his child and that he is your maker and that he loves you so much and that you are not alone. Reach out to people, um, talk to your loved ones, talk to people that you love, check on people. You know, everybody's just going through a whole bunch of different emotions. And so this is the season to really be your brother's keeper. But one thing I would give to anyone that is watching this is that um, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he's willing to rip you out of situations that you don't need to be in. He loves and cares for you so much. He cares for the plan over your life so much that he's loving you even through your stubbornness. And if you just open your heart to accepting him and decide to follow in his footsteps, I promise you, brother, sister, you're going to be good. You're going to be all right. I'm standing here to tell you that his plan is bigger and better than whatever plan you might ever have. See God as light and also charge you to be light bearers so that the people around us can also be encouraged, can also hold on to God as an anchor um, and just keep their hope and their faith in him because we know that God is the only one that can get us through. So it's my hope that whether you experienced 2020 as a year of growth, of creativity, of flourishing, despite the trial, kind of like a rose growing out of concrete, or if you experienced 2020 completely differently, you lost loved ones. You spent the year fighting via activism or fighting for yourself with getting therapy or other forms of self-help in order to stay afloat. You're here, you made it. And regardless of whether you felt like you were productive, effective, did something worthwhile, 
the fact is is that god still loves you he doesn't look at us as children who are valued for their fruit first he always cares about our heart he cares about relationship it was out of his own relationship with himself that he decided to make us and he says that we were his best creation so my hope is that you'll just continue to get closer to him bring your shame and your pain and your depression and your anxiety and your anger too some really beautiful things come out of those moments if there's one thing I would tell people and I would pray for people about for 2021 is to understand this, that yes, the world is a dark place, but as the dark gets darker, the light shines brighter. And then we're called to be the light of the world. I pray that you let your light shine. You let the light of God that lives inside of you shine bright for the whole entire world to see so you can change someone's life in Jesus name. Hey everyone, wasn't that just awesome? Hearing and seeing the different stories and the different experiences shared by all of these different people. Honestly, I was blessed and I hope that you were as well. I hope that you were encouraged and inspired with all that you need to walk into 2021. I hope that you learned the lesson of honestly trusting God in everything that happens and with everything that you're going through. So continue to walk with God as you go into 2021 and continue to be blessed. And most importantly, guys, stay safe. Bye.